Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're just gonna be hanging out, chit-chatting, and playing with some makeup. I've got a few things from the brand new ColourPop Bye Bye Birdie collection that I wanted to test out on camera. I have worn these a few times over the last couple of days and I've really enjoyed them and I thought, you guys might like to see them in action. And also, honestly, I feel like it's just been way too long since we've sat down together and chit-chatted about life. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna show you guys how I created this look that I'm wearing right now, and uh, we're just gonna hang out together and chat. I have a feeling, as most of my videos are, uh, this is going to be super long. I know somewhere towards the end there, I got real, real rambly, and I honestly feel like I have no idea what I said. Anyway, if you guys are ready to hang out and get ready together, we're about to get into it. So I'm gonna start things off by using some products that I recently shared in the video I did with Wet n Wild. I'm gonna prime my face with their uh, Rose 3-in-1 Primer Water and then go in with their stick foundation. This video is not sponsored by Wet n Wild, but I have been testing these products out since filming that video, so I thought I would take this time to test them a little bit more, share some more thoughts on them with you guys. And then for concealer, I'm gonna be using the Maybelline Fit Me. I'm trying to pan this guy. I've made some serious progress. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. It looks like it's almost empty, but it's one of those gifts that keeps on giving. Like every time I reach into this, I feel like there's plenty of product on the wand. So who knows how long that will take. So these last couple of weeks have been super busy for me. As you guys may or may not know, I am stage managing a community theater production that my husband is directing. So we've had rehearsal a lot lately. Side note, I am uh, gonna use the Wet n Wild sponge today. I actually really do like this sponge. I think it's got a really nice texture and it's super affordable, which is awesome. But anyway, so basically, since we did auditions, we've been rehearsing in a TV station because the theater where we're actually performing has been in use. Um, there was another show that was running, so it is a small community theater. It's not like one of those big professional <laughs> operations. So basically, until that show closed on the 19th, we couldn't actually get into the space. So I think it was last week, Sunday, we started building our set, painting, dressing, getting the actual space ready for us. So that has been um, kind of a lot of work. And also we started rehearsing in there and we've had more rehearsals because the show opens this Friday, November 1st. So we are like in the crunch time. Today when I'm filming this is uh, our tech Sunday. So if you don't know uh, much about the theater world, basically the Sunday before your show opens, you start uh, programming all the light and sound cues for your show and you basically start running the show in full costume, dress, etc. So you're usually at the theater every single day until you open, you're running the show at least once if not twice per day. So yeah, it's a fair amount of work. Fortunately, this particular show doesn't have really complex lighting and sound, so today should be fairly uh, straightforward. We still have a lot of set dressing to do, so we're definitely gonna be there basically from noon until late into the evening, I'm sure. But compared to some other shows that I've seen, I feel like we're, we're in pretty good shape. It's not gonna be too crazy. We just, we have a lot of set dressing to do. The play itself takes place inside of a stamp shop, which I'm not exactly sure what a stamp shop is supposed to look like, but we're kind of envisioning it like an antique store or a place where you could purchase collectibles, so we need lots of stuff to put on the walls and in display cases and stuff like that. So that's gonna be my project for the next week. So I am not gonna set my face yet because, as you guys are probably aware from the title of this video, I purchased some products from the new ColourPop Bye Bye Birdie collection, which I'm really excited about because, I mean, Birdie, how could I resist? So one of the things I decided to grab was the In A Twitter um, Blush and Light Sticks Duo. So this is a cream blush and highlight. So I figured 
We will apply these before I go ahead and set my face just so we don't have any cakeage going on. And to that point, I figured it might be nice to use a cream bronzer, so I'm going to use my Hoola Quickie Contour Stick as well. So the other thing you may or may not be aware of, um, depending on whether or not you follow me on Instagram and you view my stories, but last week I was like a woman on a mission and I decided to like rehaul my website. So I have a blog called Little Blushing Birdie, hence me with the birdie. And that was how I really got started in this whole beauty thing. So I wrote blog posts first and then later on I decided to start a YouTube channel just to kind of like round out my content. I feel like there's a lot of value to showing people how products apply in addition to just showing them pictures. So I've had this website in various iterations since 2013. Last year I migrated to WordPress. My site used to be hosted on Blogger for years and years and years which is Google's like free blogging platform, but I feel like you don't ever really show up as high in search engines when you're on a free site versus on something that's self-hosted that you have to pay for. So I finally decided to make this switch last year and I've been learning how to use WordPress ever since and I feel pretty savvy with it now. But there were things when I originally like chose the template that I have that when I first moved my site last year, I just was a little overwhelmed by, so I kind of kept things simple. And for whatever reason, despite the fact that I've been absolutely insane with theater stuff lately, I was just in the mood finally to um, like tinker with my WordPress site. And I ended up like kind of revamping the whole layout and making some new graphics. And I feel like it came out looking really, really nice. So if you guys have never seen my website, seen my blog before, it's uh, littleblushingbirdie.com and it's always linked in the description box of all of my videos. So I actually have used these blush and light sticks a few times now and so far I think they're absolutely beautiful. It's the first time I'm trying this product from ColourPop and first of all, I was actually surprised by how weighty these feel. Like when I took them out of the box, like they feel really nice and hefty and high quality for a product that's not that expensive. So the blush in this in a Twitter duo is called Hen Party. So it's this really, really pretty, like neutral pinkish tone, which I think is just super flattering and easy for every day. So that's why I went with it over the other duo, which was slightly more vibrant. So yeah, needless to say, uh, you guys can expect lots of blog content coming from me in the near future. I have like eight or nine posts in draft form right now. They're all photographed and ready to go. I just need to write them up. I finally wrote up my Jackie Ina palette review because I've been meaning to do that for honestly over a month now. It's just been kind of challenging to find time to do everything. Uh, you know, making YouTube videos is super time consuming because not only do you have to take the time to do your makeup and to film, but then editing usually takes like at least four times the amount of time that you filmed. So if you're trying to create content also for Instagram and also for a website and then also trying to like just be, you know, an adult and take care of all those other things or work other jobs, it just ends up being a lot. So I've really struggled with finding a good balance, I guess, of um, how I want to allot my time for content creation just because YouTube generally is the thing that takes up the most of my time. But I miss blogging. It's the thing that I started with and I do really enjoy photographing and writing up posts and I feel like blog posts are really nice for people who want just like fast, quick and easy information or who just want to see swatches, see what a product looks like versus YouTube is more for the experience of getting to see the product in action and getting to know the personality of the person that you're watching. It's more for entertainment. So I think they both have value and I just feel like I've been slacking on blog posts lately and uh, I want to get back to it. Side note, I just uh, put on a little bit of this Magpie highlight. It is very, very subtle. It's funny because when these light sticks first launched, I remember a lot of people saying they were very glittery and that's why some people did not like them, but I don't feel like this looks glittery at all. It definitely has a bit of a sheen, but it is super natural. So maybe that's just this particular formula, this shade. I don't know because I haven't tried any from the permanent line, but at least this one in this duo, I think is really nice. It has a strong pink 
like shift to it and I feel like it's a little on the deep side so if you were super fair you'd probably have to use this highlight as a blush topper but on my skin tone I feel like it does blend in pretty nicely it looks really natural I'm happy with it. So I think that covers all of my cream products. So I'm just gonna go in with my Maybelline Fit Me Loose Setting Powder to set everything down quick. I've also been back into my Beauty Blender Powder Puff here. Honestly, I feel like this guy really does apply powder better than a brush does. Something about the finish that it gives is so much more seamless and airbrushed and I feel like my makeup ends up looking less cakey because it's really like pressing the powder and melding it into the foundation as opposed to it just kind of sitting on top so yeah i've been i've been really really liking using this guy again lately so something else that uh just happened recently that i am i don't even know how to feel about it uh so i discovered a new youtube channel that i have been binge watching for the last like two or three days it's called skincare with hiram and hiram is I mean, he's hilarious but he's one of those people that's like both entertaining and really knowledgeable. Like he's very sassy and he does swear a fair amount. So if you don't like that, just be forewarned before you go and check out his channel. But the information that he gives on skincare is so, so good. He really knows what he's talking about. He is very well researched <laughs> and uh, he is very anti-fragrance in skincare. Um, and a lot of skincare experts uh, do say that essential oils and synthetic fragrances can be irritants to the skin. And even if you don't have a reaction right away, your skin actually can become sensitized over time. And then out of nowhere, all of a sudden you can have a reaction, especially if you're exposing your skin to those um, fragrance ingredients on a daily basis. So out of curiosity, I went through my skincare collection last night to look at the products that I own and see which of them contain the essential oils that are essentially just in there for fragrance and are known to cause irritation to the skin or anything that has synthetic fragrance. And let me tell you guys, I felt mildly devastated because it was probably 90% of what I own. Now, I'm not gonna like go throw away all of my skincare, especially products that I really like just because they have fragrance in them. But I'm really curious to see how my skin would do if I was only using products that had no type of fragrance ingredients in them. Honestly, I, I don't remember the last time that ever has happened or if it ever has happened in the entirety of my life because I like I said, most of the skincare I use has some type of fragrance in it, whether I knew it or not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill my brows in with my little Folklore uh, Sketch Eyebrow Pencil. So basically, I had this idea after watching way too many of Hiram's videos talking about different brands that have sneaky fragrance ingredients in them and realizing that like my entire skincare collection almost is full of fragrance that uh, maybe it would be interesting to do like a 30-day skincare detox. It's not really a detox, but basically try using fragrance-free products only on my skin for an entire month and see whether I notice any visible difference in my skin. Because it's interesting to me, I don't suffer with acne the way that I did when I was younger, like in my teen years and through like my early to mid 20s, I definitely struggled with breakouts. And now I get them very infrequently. Sometimes with my cycle, I might see them pop up here and there. But for the most part, my skin is pretty clear. However, I do feel like I have a fair amount of texture and like little tiny bumps. And I know they're not breakouts, but I am wondering if it's actually a reaction to fragrance that I don't really know is happening or I never really thought about in that way because my skin is not necessarily red. It's not like I'm breaking out in hives. I have had like a severe allergic reaction on my face before. It was not fun. But honestly, when I think back to all the products that I'm constantly testing and what I've had in my skincare routine for the last, I don't even know how many years, I have almost always been using multiple products with at least essential oils for the purpose of fragrance in them. And I think that so many people talk about the benefits of natural ingredients. Like you wanna definitely believe that there's a lot of benefit to them. 
But apparently the science actually shows that for a lot of people, these essential oils are more harmful than they are beneficial. So I'm just, I'm just kind of curious. So I think for the month of November, I am going to do a little like 30 day skincare challenge and only use products that I have in my collection that are fragrance free and that don't have any of the like known nasty irritating ingredients in them and see what happens. All right, so now it is time to move on to the star of today's look, which is the ColourPop Bye Bye Birdie palette. This is beautiful. I absolutely adore this packaging. Like, I suppose if ColourPop was going to do a birdie palette, like, I, I definitely approve of everything that's going on here. And then this is the color story inside that we're working with. Pinks, purples, lots of glitter, which is, again, very me. And I have dipped into this a little bit. I've primarily used uh, the Super Shock shadows that are in here, which are both really pretty but very sheer. They're more of like a glimmery topper than anything else. Uh, and I have used this shade called Nesting, which is a really pretty pinky kind of crease color. And I've also tried out this shade Boo Bird, which goes on the eyes kind of more like a matte, but has a little bit of a shimmer to it. So this is also nice as well in the crease. So I kind of like to branch out and use some things I haven't used today. I might dip into more of these purple tones and come up with something fun. So while I'm playing with this guy, I am going over to my community tab on YouTube to see some of the questions that you guys uh, submitted for me. So one of the questions is from Christina Harmon. She asks, how long does it actually take to do a getting ready with me video? Basically, I would say most of the time I'm filming one of these videos, I'm filming for at least an hour. And it does not take me that long normally to do my makeup, but when I am filming it and talking through things, it definitely takes a lot longer. So yeah, I usually end up having an hour to an hour and a half of footage every time I do one of these videos. Speaking of which, I should probably start putting makeup on my face, otherwise we're gonna be here for a very long time. I'm just gonna go in with nesting on a little crease brush and we'll just start putting that into the crease of the eye. Now I feel like these next two questions kind of, well, they're definitely different questions, but I feel like they're getting at kind of the same thing. So Cecilia asks, if you weren't on YouTube, what would your makeup collection look like? Are there products you would omit from your makeup routine? And Angela also asks, makeup addiction, shopping addiction, do you feel that you have either of them? And the reason why I say these two kind of go hand in hand is that I will say that being a YouTube creator, having a blog, etc., definitely encourages you to buy way more beauty stuff than you possibly need. So I'm sure that if I was not doing this, my collection would be quite a bit smaller than it is. Like I still love makeup and who knows if I was just watching YouTube and wasn't actually on it, whether or not that would still kind of get me to buy more than I needed. Like I would say probably yes, but I probably wouldn't have anywhere near the amount in my collection that I've got. So now I'm gonna take this shade Heron Chic and I think I'm gonna do like a halo eye today. I know I do halo eyes a lot, but I just like them for my eye shape. So I'm gonna basically put this in the outer and inner corner of my eye. So to the point of if I wasn't on YouTube, are there steps that I would omit from my makeup routine? Uh, I don't think necessarily so. I actually do really like doing most of the steps that I do on camera. I would say I probably get the laziest with primers. I don't always use a primer day to day unless I'm specifically trying to test something out just because it's an extra step that takes extra time. And a lot of times my skincare preps my skin well enough that I don't really feel like I need it. But like the, you know, foundation, concealer, setting with powder, you know, using different eyeshadows, blush, bronzer, highlight, I actually really like the way that my makeup looks when I go through all those steps. So I would probably still do all of them, uh, whether I was on YouTube or not. On the daily as it is, do I do a full beat? No, not necessarily. Some days I feel like it. Other days I just will do like 
a quick BB cream, throw on a little blush and bronzer, maybe some brows, some mascara, a lip, the end, and I can be like ready to go in 10 minutes. But I feel like, you know, regardless of my being on YouTube, I really enjoy the artistry of makeup. So I feel like that part of things probably wouldn't change even if I wasn't doing this. Now to the point of makeup or shopping addiction, I think this is a really important question to ask and for all of us to talk about because I feel like if I'm going to be completely 100% real with you guys, the YouTube beauty community, which I am guilty of being a part of and guilty of doing this as well, I feel like definitely encourages uh, irresponsible spending to an extent and I think you have to be really mindful and also really disciplined to not go overboard. So now I'm gonna take this shade here called Nevermore, which is really pretty pink, pink gold duochrome, and I'm just gonna put that in the center of my lid. If you guys have been following me for a while, you probably have noticed I am not someone that goes out and buys every new release. And honestly, part of it is that I just don't have the means to do so. Uh, as some of you may or may not know, I don't have a full-time job anymore. I basically am doing YouTube and a mishmash of other random things to support myself. Like just the other day, I was proctoring the ACTs at an all-girls high school to make myself uh, some extra money for the day. Just so you guys know, I'm going to go in with the shade Finch next on just a small brush to kind of blend that other center shade out a little bit. So yeah, as I've mentioned to you guys before, uh, being self-employed definitely has its perks. Namely, uh, I don't have to set an alarm, I don't have to commute anywhere, but uh, making money or like financial security is definitely a lot harder unless you are in a place where you are very, very successful in making a lot of money, which at this point in my YouTube career, I'm definitely not. I obviously don't want to uh, be a sellout and uh, be doing like sponsorships or things like that that I don't believe in uh, just to make money. But it definitely is one of those things that I have to literally consider like how I'm going to pay my bills every month. Uh, because my husband is not, you know, he doesn't make a crazy amount of money. So with him being our primary uh, source of income right now, things are not exactly like super easy. So I don't have tons of extra cash to just be shelling out to buy new makeup launches unless I don't want to, you know, eat that week. At the same time, I feel like I care so much about my channel and I really do want to grow here and like it's one of those catch-22 situations where it's like you need money to make money kind of thing. Like if you want to have a successful channel that can end up bringing you like some source of income, you kind of have to have uh, new products to talk about because those are the videos that people want to watch. Like usually my getting ready with me videos and such are, you know, much less viewed than some of my videos where I am talking about newer things. So yeah, I definitely appreciate uh, Samantha March kind of bringing the whole concept of the Will I Buy It series to the YouTube beauty sphere because that is a great way to talk about new launches without actually needing to buy new launches. And I know Samantha like went into a whole conversation about this in a recent video she did about being in debt from buying too much makeup and how that series allowed her to grow her channel without continuing to contribute to that debt. So yeah, there is definitely like a balance to be struck there. I don't know that I would necessarily say I'm addicted to shopping, but I definitely feel like I do notice myself being compelled to buy things and like really having to stop myself from placing certain orders, especially like if I have a good coupon and a good deal on something, like it is very tempting. And I feel like I've gotten better about not making impulse purchases, not overbuying, being mindful of my budget, but perhaps I'm not like, you know, the absolute best uh, that I possibly could be. These shadows, by the way, are so beautiful. I mean, I always have really enjoyed ColourPop's eyeshadow formula. I think it performs so nicely. I think the price point is beyond fair for what you're getting. That is 
that is really fun. I think now I wanna take a little bit of this shade Ariel, which is one of the Super Shock shadows. This one's just really glimmery and pretty, and I'm just going to tap a little bit of this on the center right on top of that other shade just to see if I can get it to add like a little bit of extra something something. I'm kind of curious about the shade Fly By Night which is kind of a deep purple with a little bit of sparkle to it. I think I'm going to put this on the lower lash line and see how that goes. Let's see what other questions I have to answer as well. Uh, Things by the Burke asked me, how do people in your life feel about you working in social media? Do you find a lot of people don't take it seriously? So eh, I feel like this again is relevant to what we're just talking about. So I would say some people more than others understand. I think it's hard, especially for like my parents who are super old school. Um, you know, they were born in the 50s and I feel like this whole social media world is very weird to them. So, you know, being in a place where I'm not making the same income that I was making when I was working in a full-time job, to them, I think sort of delegitimizes what I'm doing a little bit. And that really does suck sometimes just because I can't control right now exactly how much money, for example, like I'm making in AdSense that's entirely dependent on my views and like my subscriber count is going up, which is awesome. But I feel like my views are kind of unpredictable. It's hard to say. So that does sort of, you know, make things a little bit challenging. And again, I am finally in a place where I'm being offered some sponsorships, which is amazing. Like it's so awesome when brands are willing to work with someone who has a much smaller following like me and they still see a lot of value in the content that I'm making. So I like really, really appreciate those opportunities because they really do allow me to keep doing this for you guys. But I always kind of have this feeling in like the back of my mind of like, will it ever be enough or when will it be enough? for someone to look at me and be like, oh, YouTube is a legitimate job, you know? Like, what, what is the dollar amount that makes it legitimate? And I, I really don't know what the answer to that is. So now I'm just gonna go into a little bit of liner. I might do a little wing with this Focaler Super Fine Liquid Liner. And then I think in the lower lash line, I'm gonna use this cream gel liner from the uh, Bye Bye Birdie collection. It doesn't say, oh, yes it does, Charmer. Charmer is the shade that I'm using. It is really hard to do eyeliner and talk at the same time, I'm just saying. I feel like this look is gonna call for falsies. So I'm gonna go in with the Tarte Big Ego Mascara first, and then I'm gonna try out this new pair from Carity. This is the Style Sarah. So let's move on to another question. Uh, Najette Roberts asks, what products do you like for every day versus going out, like drugstore versus high end? And what holiday set would you like as a gift for this holiday season? So, <laughs> well, ironically, I'm pretty sure that the only beauty gifting I will be getting will be from myself if I choose to buy anything. But I am planning on filming a holiday wish list video uh, showcasing the specific products and sets that I personally am most interested in. I mentioned that in my new in beauty video that I filmed earlier in October, uh, just because there's so many new holiday launches coming out and I couldn't talk about everything <laughs> in that one video. So that wish list will be coming your way soon. But one thing I will say that I am like probably most into that's a gift set is um, from M Cosmetics. I've never tried anything from M Cosmetics before and they have kind of like a blockbuster gift set. I mean, when I say blockbuster, it's not like $300, but they have like full size versions of I think four or five products in it and it would be like a really nice way to try a bunch from the brand. So that is something that I definitely have my eye on. And then as far as everyday versus like special occasions or going out, I would say that for every day, I definitely am a lot more likely to wear cream products. Like I said before, days where I just wanna keep it really light and easy, I will throw on like a BB cream and maybe some cream blush or cream highlight, you know, some lip gloss brows. Brows are always a must because my brows are really sparse and crazy. But I'll usually keep it fairly minimal on the eye. I'm not afraid to wear shimmer or glitter for the everyday, 
but I may do like instead of a full halo eye like this, maybe do something like using just one of those shimmery super shock shadows, putting it all over the lid, do just like one matte color in the crease and call it a day. So I feel like my everyday makeup routine there's not like products, like it's not like I only save my high-end makeup for special occasions and when I'm going out. I feel like I kind of rotate through everything, but it's really just a matter of like how many steps and usually for every day, I slim things down a little bit. Like I'm less likely to use like a full-on liquid glitter or to wear liquid liner or lashes or anything like that. Usually I save that stuff only for filming or for special occasions. All right, let's see how this goes on. I actually just did a video, which you guys may or may not have seen, about applying and wearing false lashes. So if you want to learn all of my little tips and tricks for falsies, I will link that video for you guys up here in the cards and in the description box. I really like this lash style. It actually looks super natural because it's not too dense. I wanted to go for something a little less dramatic today because uh, I am going to be at the theater all afternoon. Not that anybody there is gonna care if I'm like in full glam makeup. They all understand my YouTube hustle, so it's fine. I, I just felt like it might be a little overkill to have like the, the super crazy lashes on today, and I, I feel like this is perfect. This is this is what I was going for. All right, so I think this look is pretty much done. I'm gonna finish things off with this uh, Bite Beauty Amuse-Bouche lipstick. Word on the street is that they are reformulating this guy, and I think it's because this original formula has beeswax in it, and I think Bite Beauty is trying to make more of their products vegan. However, if they mess with the lip mask formula, I'm gonna lose my crap because their agave lip mask is perfection and it does have lanolin in it which can cause irritation to some people and it's not vegan because it's made from sheep's wool so there's a little part of me that's afraid like if they are trying to go fully vegan that thinks they may mess with that formula they already messed with their stick lip balm which was really really good and now the texture is like completely different and uh, it just it does kind of suck when a brand reformulates a product you really really love like I understand ethically why they're choosing to do it but it's gonna make me a little sad if they do. All right, so I think that's it. This is my completed final look. I'm really, really enjoying how the whole thing came together. I honestly am impressed by the stick foundation, guys. You know I'm not a stick foundation person. Like, I want to be, but so many of them do not work out well for me at all, and I feel like this one has a really nice finish. It's not super thick and full coverage. Like, it definitely covers nicely, but it's very natural looking. It is a little bit more on the emollient side in that it's not great with my having oily skin, like I will get shiny after like three, four hours of wearing this. So I know I am gonna need to like touch it up with some blotting sheets eventually. But I think if you have normal skin or dry skin, you'll probably really enjoy this. And I'm just gonna suck it up and deal with the shininess because I really, really like like the overall way it looks on my face. I'm also honestly so impressed with these blush and light sticks. Not only are these shades beautiful, like I feel like my cheeks just look like really healthy and flushed, but like not too much. And they were super easy to apply. Like you can blend these out with your fingers, no problem. And of course the Birdie palette, this is just so beautiful. Do I have these pink and purple tones a million times over in my collection? Yeah, I do but they are some of my favorite tones. I love the glitter textures in here. I'm really excited to play with those guys. And knowing that like I got this at a discount, I picked it up while ColourPop was having 20% off this entire collection. So it was 14 bucks for this palette. Like I feel like that was a very fair price to pay for this guy. And these lashes are really nice as well. This is only the second pair that I've tried out. Carity sent me over eight different ones and they feel really nice. They're very comfortable. The bands are really flexible so you don't have to worry about them um, feeling heavy or stiff on your eyes. Like obviously, I mean, if you've never worn false lashes, it's gonna feel like something. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but as far as a false lash goes, I think these look really nice and high quality, so like for eight bucks, 
not bad at all. All right guys, so that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope uh, this video was not too rambly. Like I said before in the intro, I honestly have no idea what this footage is gonna be like. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that when I go to edit this, I won't sound like a lunatic or that like it'll make at least some semblance of sense. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you will consider giving it a thumbs up. I always really appreciate your support and your feedback so, so much. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already and you want to see my face again in the future, I hope you will consider clicking that button before you go. As always, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, you just want to say hi, you want to tell me about your day, leave it all for me in the comments down below. I love chatting with you guys. And yeah, on that note, it is uh, about time for me to leave and drive over to the theater. Hopefully I'll have enough time to grab some form of breakfast on the way there because I'm realizing I haven't eaten anything today. Gotta, gotta need to take care of that situation. So yeah, on that note, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>